This is the Mandelbrot fractal, outputted into a command prompt. I have always been fascinated by the visuals that can be generated using code. One example is the so-called spinning donut. I challenged myself to generate an interesting visual using Python. After some searching, I came across the fractal generated from the Mandelbrot set. This set is defined using complex numbers, which Python has good compatibility with, so I thought it made sense to attempt the Mandelbrot set. Before diving into the fractal, I wanted to start with simple plots then move on to more complex ones. I started by creating a 2D array. This may sound complicated but it is just an array where each element of the array is an array. Each element can be thought of a pixel in our plot and can be selected by accessing our array of arrays. To display this plot, we just need to loop through and print each row. Next step is to plot a graph such as y equals x squared. This was done by iterating through each column, which is our x value, then finding the output, our y value. Then I would insert an at symbol at that specific pixel if the y value is within our limit. In order to move the origin to the center of our plot, we can simply move the graph to the right by half the total length, then move the graph up by half the total length as well. Also, to be able to zoom into the plot, we need a way to change the scale. This is accomplished by multiplying our x and y values with a constant. Let's have a look at a few examples of different functions with changing scales. There's a couple of things that we need to know about complex numbers in order to generate the Mandelbrot set. You are probably familiar with the number line, but if we extend the number line to include the so-called imaginary axis, we get the complex plane. A complex number is simply a point on the complex plane. We can calculate the distance of a complex number to the origin using Pythagoras theorem. This distance is what we call the modulus of a complex number. When manipulating complex numbers, we can treat the i as a variable. When there is an i squared, we can convert it to minus 1. Or you can think of i as the square root of minus 1. Translating complex numbers to Python is not too difficult as it has inbuilt compatibility. For example, we can initialize complex numbers using this, and we can find the modulus of a complex number using this. There are various ways to define a Mandelbrot set, but the criteria that we will be using is, in order to determine if our input is an element of the set, we iterate it through this equation an arbitrary number of times. If the modulus stays below 2, it is part of the Mandelbrot set. For example, take the number 1. By the second iteration, the modulus is greater than 2. Therefore, 1 is not part of the set. Take the number 0.25. We can see that even after several iterations, the modulus stays below 2. Therefore, 0.25 is part of the Mandelbrot set. We can extend this criteria to the complex plane. Let's pick a complex number, say 0.5 plus 0.5i. By the fourth iteration, the modulus is greater than 2. Therefore, this point is not part of the set. Have a look at negative 0.5 plus 0.6i.
After several iterations, the modulus seems to stay below 2, therefore this point is part of the Mandelbrot set. Translating all this to Python was surprisingly not too difficult. We need to check every pixel of our array of arrays and see if it meets our criteria. We iterate the equation an arbitrary number of times, and if the modulus is greater than 2, then it is not part of the set. But if the modulus stays below 2 and we reach the total number of iterations, then we can flag this value and use that flag to colour in that pixel. The array size I chose was 200 by 200, which comes to a total of 40,000 pixels. I chose 650 iterations per pixel, which means each frame could cost up to 26 million calculations. As you can imagine, this caused the output to be slow. I still wanted to get that fractal zoom, so I recorded it for 30 minutes and sped it up to get about 30 seconds of video. In case you are curious, these are the coordinates that I used.